Time is filled with sweet transition Not of earth unmoved can stand Build your hopes on things eternal Hold to God's unchanging hand Hold to God's unchanging hand Changing hand, trust in him who will not leave you. Whatsoever years may bring, if by earthly friends forsaken, still more closely to him cling. unchanging hand covet not this world's vain riches that so rapidly decay seek to gain the heavenly treasures they will never pass this way Unchanging hand Hold to God's unchanging hand Build your hopes on things eternal Hold to God's unchanging hand When your journey is completed you have been true, fair and bright, the home in glory, your enraptured soul will view. services that we've been having here lately I'll tell you what I am so thankful for God showing up and we know we always say he doesn't have to but he does and I really do thank him for that and I'm I'm I've still been feasting on the service that we've had this past weekend and uh, it just it just keeps flowing in my heart this past week just couldn't get away from it Nancy and I thank him for that all right Addie you re are you ready Let's get behind her as she sings. In prisoner's chains With bleeding stripes Paul and so
Go in peace and laugh on glory sight And fly to Jesus Fly to Jesus Fly to Jesus I ever saw uh, Tommy Brown look happier than when Doug walked in the door there. So I got Tom off the hook there. <clears throat> um, there's a game show on where they, let's see, how's it goes? They give you the answer and you got to come up with a question. What is that? That's Jeopardy. Yeah, Jeopardy. Where they tell you the, the answer and you've you got to come up with a question. I got to admit, I've never watched that show. I might have seen a little pieces of it here and there, but I guess I was bored, so I turned it off or whatever. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it doesn't take much for me either, brother. I know what you mean. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to play Jeopardy, Jeopardy with you for just a moment. Um, and the answer to this question is amazing grace. And I'm not going to ask you for your answer or for your question. But the question is, why are you here? God's amazing grace brings us here tonight. Got us through another day. Helps us uh, carry on in this life. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found, was blind, but now I see.
singing tonight. Thank the Lord for it. Thank, thank the Lord that Doug made it just right on time. <laughs> I, had a, I had a devotional here whipped up for you, but I, now I'm tasting. <laughs> now it's good to have our assistant pastor here with us. Everybody mind of the Lord tonight? All right, Doug, go. Come on up. Well, I've always wanted to feel what it's like to be Tate and Brittany. And I got to I got to figure that out tonight. I'll stick to being me. I don't like being late. But I almost testified to that. Did you? Yeah. I uh I was in line over there at uh three forty eight got there about 7 o'clock and everybody was turning around in front of me because they had the bridge all closed up there by the briar patch. So Facebook's the devil, you know what I mean. They already had it figured out. They said a man on a log in the river and a kayak, all kinds of things. And then uh, so they said the road's going to be shut down for hours. So I turned around, went all the way to Portsmouth and uh, come that way, so that's why we're so late. But uh, anyway, we're here, and uh, we'll give you what God has given us. I uh, I slipped into the to the hospital last night and seen uh, Jeff and Monty, and uh, 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 Monty is uh, you know you know he got the, his the sugar out of whack air and probably gonna have to be on insulin probably the rest of his life, I'd say. And, uh, but, uh, then I will slip down and seen Jeff and, and I want to leave you guys with this and you can do whatever you want with it. But, uh, me and Tom talk to Jeff a lot. He calls us, he's, he's always down in the dumps because Jeff is bed fast. He just lays in a hospital bed in his living room. I've been over and seen him and, and he lays in that, in that living room on that bed and can't can't get up, can't do anything. So the enemy attacks his mind. That's how the enemy attacks him because he can't get him to go out and do sin or all that. So he attacks his mind. And uh, I know me and Tom's talked, we, we've talked him through a lot of dark dark thoughts, you know, and uh, I'll just leave it at that. But he looked at me last night and he said, do they still care about me out there do they miss me at all out there I said Jeff your name is called out all the time and we pray for you all the time and you are missed and uh, I of course I always like to get him laughing because Jeff's a jokester I said I miss you on that front sleeping front seat sleeping while I'm preaching I told him and of course he laughed you know and carried on but uh uh, he's pretty depressed. If you feel like sending him a card this week, uh, it'd be really good if you'd do that and let him hear from some of you. I'm sure it would lift his spirits, and uh, he he should get out of the hospital there as soon as they get his infection cleared up. But uh, uh, his test today come back okay. It's not in his heart. So uh, I just had that on my mind. If you have your Bibles, we'll be in Second Kings chapter six. Second Kings chapter six. We'll give you what the Lord's given us. Probably should be done an hour and 20 minutes or so, Ted. About an hour and 20, I'll get it all out. So uh, I'll give you what God's given us. It's at uh, verse 6 of chapter 6 says this, And the man of God said, Where fault, where fell it? And he showed him the place, and he cut down a stick and 
cast it in hither, and the iron did swim. Therefore he said, Take it up to thee, and put out thy hand, and he took it. Tonight, if I would title this message, it would be this, Remember Where You Lost It. Remember Where You Lost It. Uh, Elisha was a prophet of God who was a student of Elijah at the time. And he was, uh, he was present when God carried Elijah away. The mantle, the Bible says, the mantle fell upon Elisha to be Elijah's successor. Now, we know this is true. We know that Elisha got the double portion because it is recorded in the word of God that Elijah did eight miracles and Elisha did 16. Well, I went to Otway and I can still figure that out. That's double, okay? So he truly got the double portion. When he asked Elisha for the double portion, Elijah told him, you can go back and read this, he said, you've asked for a hard thing. You've asked for a hard thing. But Elisha meant what he said and he never left Elijah's side. He knew what it was going to take to get the double portion and that was not to leave the man of God no matter what. And that's what he did. In 2 Kings chapter 2, you'll find Elijah, or Elisha remained faithful to the work of the Lord. God used Elisha to deliver his word and work miracles through him. He emerged as a, as a powerful prophet. And the men of God respected Elisha. And, and they, they followed his leadership. You know, even as we live our lives according to God's will, and we do the best we can do, Everett, we come to church, we, we put God first, we live for Him, we do everything he, that He asked us to do, there is something that's going to come to all of us, and that's loss. Loss is unavoidable. It's going to happen to every one of us. Webster says law, uh, loss means the act or fact of being unable to keep or maintain something or someone. Now, we lose stuff all the time. We lose our keys. We lose our, our billfold. We lose our iPhone. We, all the time, the remote is like a ghost at the house. You lose the remote all the time. You lose a pocket knife. You lose your tools. You know, you're losing stuff all the time. And all those things you lose here on earth can all be replaced. They can all be replaced. But how about spiritually, spiritually tonight? What have you lost spiritually? Some of you used to shout. You ain't shouted in a while. It's been a while. You got to watch the devil take that from you. He'll steal that from you. Some of you, it's been a while since you've had some joy in your life. Better watch, you better watch. If you don't get that taken care of, he'll take that as well. Our, our compassion on others. And I want to make it very clear to every last one of you here tonight, the devil can take your salvation. There's churches out there that believe that you can't backslide, but you're in a church here tonight that believes that you can backslide and lose your integrity with God. Now, you can only get saved one time. I agree with them on that. You can only be saved one time. But here's the, here's the thing. You walk away from your salvation, you'll need to come back to it and repent and ask God to restore you and fill you back up. Pick up your first works, the Bible says. Pick up your cross. And, and we believe that here. And there's so many people nowadays, and I'm telling you, I'm telling the truth here. There's a lot of folks nowadays that don't think that 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 this is a close way or whatever. But this is a close way. If you don't keep it up to date, if you don't come to church, pray, read your Bible, and do what you're supposed to do for the Lord, the devil can take your salvation and cost you your soul. I wanna, we want to make that perfectly clear tonight. You can lose your song. You can lose your testimony. These are things that the devil can take from you. And I'll tell you how important it is about losing something. Luke chapter 15 has three powerful par parables on the lost. First, it talks about the lost sheep. You all know the story, but I'm just going to refresh your memory quickly here. 
You all know the story of the lost sheep. The man had a hundred sheep and one was missing. The Bible says that he left his 99 and went searching for that one little lamb that was lost. And it says he searched. I like what the Bible says. Go back and read it. He searched until he found it, Tom. He searched until he found it. What happens when he found it? The Bible says he rejoiced. He called in his friends and neighbors to rejoice with him. Then there's a lost coin. The woman, having 10 pieces of silver, loses one and seek diligently, the Bible says, until she found it. And when she found it, she called in her friends and family and they rejoiced. You kind of get in the, tr uh, the trend of this thing. The prodigal son, we all know that story, how he asked for his, the, the father's goods that was coming to him and he went out and wasted it all. But he come back to father's house. The father said to the, to the servants, go get the ring, go get the coat, go get the, the, the robe, kill the fatted calf. My son was lost, he's found again. He's home and, and they rejoiced when that happened. Two things happen when you lose something. Number one, as a child of God, recognize what you lost and go seek until you find it. Don't stop nowhere along the way. Don't talk to negative Nellie. Don't, don't talk to those kind of people. Keep searching, Michael, until you find it. And when you find it, rejoice about it. Let the Lord know that, that hey, you've restored me. You've took care of that. Give him some praise and glory. It'll do you good. It'll do you good to get on your feet and glorify God a little bit. Let the world know that you are serving a risen Savior, one that can take care of you. So it is important, it is important to recognize what you've lost. Our response to loss determines how bad we really want to find it or not. When we realize that we no longer have the tools that we need to be successful, we need to go back to the place where we lost it. Identify how and where we lost it and trust God to do the restoring. Hey, I'm going to be honest with you. There ain't nobody in this house tonight that has not ever asked the Lord to forgive them. My grandpa used to tell me this, and he probably had to pray this prayer because he'd burn you on a shotgun or a pocket knife. But he always said this, Jeff. He said, every night before I go to bed, I ask the Lord to forgive me of anything that I might have done that was displeasing to him, and he lived a good life, Grandpa did. It wasn't like he was out catting around or anything. Not, the, not those kind of things. But, and he said, I also asked the Lord to forgive me of the things that I didn't even recognize. And I thought, boy, that's pretty good. And I prayed those, that prayer over, over my years. Asked the Lord to make sure everything's okay, because we need to check in. We need to check in. Hey, we're living in a day and age where the devil's job is to rock the church asleep and to soothe your conscience and let you know that, that even dirty things that was five years ago that are just now normal to you, something's wrong. Something's wrong. Sin don't change. See, the group of men who followed Elisha decided that the place where they lived was too small. I'm gonna give you a little background here. So they told Elisha, they asked him for permission to build a bigger place. They said they was going down to the Jordan River to chop some wood and to cut some wood. And Elisha gave them permission, but they wanted him to go with them so they could build this building. While one of the servants was chopping the wood, his axe head flew off into the water. See, the axe head was made of solid arm and was extremely valuable, but it was also borrowed. The servant told Elisha about the axe head, and Elisha asked the servant to show him where the axe fell in the water. So Elisha cut down a stick and cast it in the spot where the axe head flew in, and the Bible says it floated to the top, and the servant retreated, or retrieved the axe head and completed his work. See, some folks in church have lost their axe head. All they got left's the handle. I'm getting somewhere with this. 
You ain't going to chop much wood with just a handle. You ain't going to put the devil on the flight with just a handle. You ain't going to scare the booger man any at all with just a handle. You're not going to do any damage. You getting what I'm trying to say? All that was left was the handle. You cannot be used of God or the church because you've lost something very important. Very important. You go over into Revelations chapter 2, verse 4 and 5. Listen what this says. Nevertheless, I have somewhat against thee because thou hast left thy first love. Remember therefore from whence thou art fallen and repent and do the first works. So if you've lost your first love, what have you lost? You've lost your cutting edge. You've lost your cutting edge. See, and for the church, love is the cutting edge. We had an old preacher, Indian preacher in here. Years ago, I was just a boy. Albo, I believe was his name, am I right? Albo, big old Indian fella. And he would get here in front and he preached a message on love them into the kingdom. That is the church's job is to love them into the kingdom. The Lord will do the cleaning up. The, the Holy Spirit will convict them and save them, Mark told. Our job is to love them, get them into the house of God and God will do the rest. So if we've lost our cutting edge, we've lost our first love. Love is the center of the gospel, period. There ain't no other way around it. Love is the center of the gospel. If we've lost our first love, we can't do anything. All that's left to do is repent and go back to where we left it, where we lost it. See, the servant was using a borrowed ax, which suggested that he didn't have his own ax or or, and he couldn't afford, afford to replace the one he was using. Losing the ax head meant that not only would he not be able to complete the work, but he would also been in debt to the lender. Boy, we, we're in debt tonight. <laughs> we're in debt. The Lord's been awful good to me. I'm in debt, Gary, quite a bit tonight to the Lord. He's been good to this guy. He's been good to you. He give you another day. He give you he give you another opportunity to be in the house of God. He give you he give you an automobile to drive here tonight and a, and a house to go home and lay your head down in. We're indebted today. We need to be careful. We need to not be slothful about the Father's business and end up losing what He's gave us. We may not have known that our iron head would float, but He did know that Elisha was a prophet of God and could help him. Well, can I stop right here and say that Beach Fork Church, and I'm, I'm excluding myself clear out of the picture, even clear back to when I was just a boy brought here and Brother Delbert Evans was our pastor. Then Debbie came along and became our pastor. Now Tom has come along and become our pastor. Can I say that I've got confidence in all three. If something happened to me and I needed some kind of, of guidance along the way or prayer or whatever, Mike, I have not a problem of going to Debbie or to Tom, say, hey, this is what's happened in my life. Would you please help me? And you as the church need to not try to get on social media and get comfort or get comfort from a worldly friend. You need to get comfort from your leaders. Somebody that'll give you Bible and, and backbone and, and that'll stand against the devil when he comes your way. So they went to Elisha. He knew that Elisha could help. Men, perhaps, uh, they, they knew that, that Elisha could help. And, and it's a blessing to have godly leadership in a church. It's a blessing. I'll just tell you, I'll just tell you this, and, and I know I'm taped and I don't really care. I'm Doug Brown from Lucasville. If you want to come looking for me, I'll tell you that too, so it don't matter. But Jeff and Allison was here Sunday, and they said, wow, what a service. It was a good service. It was a great service, but we've had a lot better. We're spoiled here. You understand what I'm getting at? 
They said, we ain't been in a service like that since we was down last time, six, seven months ago. They have completely remodeled their church. They took the lights out of the sanctuary. It's dark in the sanctuary. And they put up all these different color lights up on the screen. They got this, or up on the walls, and they got this screen that floats back and forth. They got so much smoke going on on the platform, they can't even see who's singing. I'm telling you the truth. This is their words. So I said, you turned your sanctuary into a bar, huh? Is that what you've done? I said, more or less, more or less. I think a pastor just preached about this just Sunday there. He preached about this. We don't want none of that garbage here. As long as I'm part of it, it won't come in here. I can tell you that. We're going to keep the lights on. We're going to keep the walls white. It's going to look like the house of God in here. Amen. That's what it is. It's supposed to. You know what? Here it is. I'll just tell you like it is. This is just me, just good old Doug Brown from Otway stuff right here, okay? It's just me right here. The devil was the father of, or was the prince of light, the father of lights in heaven. When he was cast out of heaven and went to hell, he became, he was the angel of light, that's what I was trying to, to come up with. He went the opposite. He became the prince of the darkness when he, came to, when he came to hell. So why in the world would you want the house of God to look dark and dingy and look worldly when we are supposed to be the light in our community that shines bright, the beacon of hope for those that need to come in and find salvation and deliverance. Are you with me? Are you with me? Okay, that's what I thought you was. There'll be times in our life when it feels like something is missing. It is, it's not God's desire for his children to lack in anything. It ain't. It ain't his desire. Whether it be spiritually, mentally, emotionally, physically, or financially. Here's what the Lord showed me this week. I think it was Tuesday night. I was, I was studying on this. And here's what the Lord told me. And I wrote it down. God has the power to replace lack with abundance. God has the power to replace lack with abundance. Hey, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be honest with you. Over my time coming here to Beach Fork, I've seen people come through that door, tattered, look like they didn't have two pennies rubbed together. They get saved, they get changed, John, and they come back on a Sunday or a Wednesday, and we didn't even know them. They look so much different. They cleaned up. They took the world off and, and got, got God on the inside. He started shining on the inside of their heart. And before long, all those things that they was lacking, God started putting bountiful things in their lap, abundant things in their lap. Give them jobs and, and, and automobiles and all kinds of testimonies I've heard over my life. Hey, I'm serving a God that'll spare the lack and give you abundance. He will. These men were building a bigger building because they'd outgrown the one they was in. This axe head was an essential tool for the increase. Now, I'm going to stop here for just a minute. Debbie come out here, I don't even know what year it was, but we was in that little red church. And we started growing and started out growing it. And we built this second church on here. 92, we built it on, outgrowed it, then we built this on in 2000, a pandemic hit, we've lost some people, but they're coming back, I would just love to tear out and go that way sometime, or however we need to do it, yeah, we got plenty of ground out through there. Don't stop doing what you know you need to be doing. And don't be scared of what God can do for you. Listen, don't allow loss to cause you to give up on your increase. 
Remember where you lost it. Go get it and keep building. Two questions tonight I want to ask you, and then I'm done. Two questions. So tonight I want to ask you this. What have you lost? Only you can answer that. And God knows, and you know. So what have you lost? Then I'm going to ask you this. Where did you lose it? There ain't no child of God that's got the Holy Ghost living on the inside going to be surprised when they sin. I'm going to tell you why that is. Because the Holy Ghost will give you a jaw smacking. He'll give you an attitude check. He'll make sure that you know you're messing up. You understand what I'm saying? So, in other words, you know where you've quit along the way. You know where you've gave up of it along the way. So here's what you need to do. It's just real simple. Go get it back. Beach Fork needs you to get it back. Your family needs you to get it back. You need it yourself to go get it back. See, that's a problem with the church today. Folks have lost it and they know they have, but they don't really want to go find it and dig it up and start over again, and here's why. Here's why. This is what the Lord showed me. This is what he showed me. He said this, because we have gotten used to living without it. We have gotten used to living without it. And that's worrisome. That's worrisome. Because no way can you live a fully blessed life without it. No way can you fully be used by God or by this church without it. And I'm going to tell you why that is. Because God gave it to you and it was your responsibility and you lost it. So you need to go ask the Father for help to dig it back up, find it, and start using it again. See, I'm going to tell you this. And... and it's, it's just plain and simple, but it's the truth. Life is so much better with it than without it. The blessings of God come in your life and show up big time when you got it. And they'll go away if you ain't. That's all I have. Let's be standing. That's what the Lord gave us tonight. I don't know who needed it, but I know it was for here. Because the devil tried to set a roadblock up and this guy here, hey, trust me, it'd been real easy to turn around and go home. As you all know how I am on that one. But uh, no, I, I needed to get here tonight and give this message because I don't know who it's for. Every head bowed, every eye closed, no one looking on. Nobody's going to judge you. Nobody's going to look down on you. Let's use these altars if we need to tonight. We got plenty of time, plenty of time to pray with you, pray with your need. Any of you young people struggling with anything, any of you young people need to get closer to God or mark up, or use these altars to do that. I'm telling you, you'll grow by leaps and bounds if you'll do that. If you'll do that for just a moment, just a moment. Anybody at all need to pray? Anybody at all? Amen. Amen. Lord, I thank you for showing up tonight. Thank you, Lord, for helping us. God, I, I give what you give me, and it's up to the people, Lord. We pray. And we know you don't never make a mistake. But God, we pray if this was for somebody that they'll, they'll go home and talk it over with you and pick up and find what they've lost. God, we ask you all those that's hurting in our church to be with them. Watch over them. Help them, Lord. Heal their bodies. Father, we pray. Amen, Lord. Give us a great service Sunday morning, great service Sunday night. Lord, we, we thank you for what all you do. Bless this place. Bless these people. Keep them safe the remainder of this week. Take them home safely in Jesus' name.